Greetings, students. Welcome to the orientation time for this course, FN40, um, for the summer session. And my name again is Erica Ireland. I am going to be your instructor during this endeavor. And my goal here today is really to help you feel um, very comfortable in our online um, environment here inside Canvas and, and make sure that you feel um, that you can maneuver through our our site the best that you can and not to feel intimidated by uh, the site. And so one of the things that I've learned over the years of teaching and I teach um, here at City College and then I also teach at Fresno State and in an online environment if students feel um, that they have a hard time getting through and 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 getting a grasp on all of the areas that the instructor has set up that they, they don't feel as comfortable. And so my goal today with this online um, orientation is to just show you how I've set this up so that um, hopefully that it makes sense to you. It makes sense to me on my side, but um, I want to make sure that the students um, are able to utilize it as well. So you should be seeing my screen and it should say FN40 um, right there and you'll know that you've reached uh, this page because it has a landing page or the home screen that should look something like this and one of the things that I've mentioned um, in one of the other video emails that I did is that I've tried to set this up um, as user friendly as possible but again it seems user friendly for me and maybe it's not for everybody else so I just want everybody to know some of the features and benefits of the way that it's been set up and how to get you moving through it very um, efficiently. One of the things that I want to talk about um, is that we've set the course up. It is a four-week course, and I mentioned this before. So we're covering um, 18 weeks into four weeks, which really means that we're going to cover um, four chapters or a little over four chapters every week and when we look at that's on an average but when i look at it the majority of the chapters um really gets really intense between week three and week four and so i really want to direct your attention to the fact that if you can work ahead that's encouraged because this format um, of this particular course is what we call asynchronistic and asynchronistic means that you can work on it at your own time that we won't be having a required time that we log in and that you have to watch or um, do any kind of lectures with me. That being said, um, I do still hold synchronistic optional times for students to get a little bit more of what we would call technical assistance. Um, and multiple students can log in and ask questions. And if one student has the question, perhaps others have the questions. So I try to handle it that way um, as one of the means to um, help out with maneuvering through this course. But the second part of that then also has to do with um, this area right here called the question cafe. So when students have questions, one of the best things to do is actually to post your question here because if you have it, probably other students have it. And um, rather than just shooting me an email and asking me the question, because then I might have to reply to you and then someone else sends me the same question, then I have to reply again. So it saves me time, but it also probably could save you time because a student might actually know the answer and they might get back to you faster than I can. Um, so in that sense, um, that's the purpose of the question cafe. So if you have a question, put it here first before you send me an email. That way um, any of your fellow students can um, and chime in as well. And I also think when we do this, this it helps a little bit more build this community and camaraderie with inside our course so that you get to know your peers a little bit more um, here in this course, because it's hard when you're working online, you kind of feel alone. Um, and I'm trying not to do that here with this course. I want to involve the, the students as much as possible so that they can feel like they could reach out to fellow students and or um, the instructor. Okay, so again, landing page here, you can hyperlink to any one of these weeks, but the way that I have it set up is that I'd like you to move through with what we call prerequisites, meaning that when you complete week one, then you move into week two. So I'm going to go ahead and click on week one here so that you can see as you move through this, um, it wants you to complete all of these things before you're going to go and uh, be allowed to go into a uh, 
week two, which is down here. So the best practice here is that when you're ready um, to go ahead and click on the course overview. And again, there's a lot of text here, but that's because um, I'm not here lecturing and reminding you of these things. So it is quite a bit of reading and it sometimes can get redundant, but it really also should hopefully provide you with very good explanations of things so that you don't feel alone and that you feel like um, you can get through this course because I've answered all of your questions. So when, once you're done with what we call this is a page, when you're done with this page, you will go to the next page. Okay, and then once you get to the, this page and you review this page or do whatever this page is asking you to do, and in this case it's a longer page, this happens to be our course outline, by the way, that is in the syllabus, but I've also put it here, um, you can go to the next and it will keep moving you through, but what it's actually moving you through is the entire week one module. So you can go back here to week one and everything that we just did, as you can see, we're moving through all of these these steps right here so you can do this at your own pace you can click on them this way if you feel more comfortable rather than hitting next but most students will start here and then just kind of keep going through for the amount of time that they can devote um, at, at one sitting to this area to their to their studies okay so that does bring me to uh, looking at this and because I was showing you the course um, schedule, I want to go back um, and just let you also know that our syllabus is right here. So if you want a full copy of the syllabus, my syllabus is actually 11 pages long. It is worth the read um, because it has a lot of information in it. It actually has lots of demographic information on, you know, point systems and things like that. So I encourage you to read this, um, download it. But the other thing that's helpful is that there is a course summary right here that the um, Canvas is put together. So if you've never worked in Canvas be before, um, this is how it kind of tries to lay out and let you have reminders as to when things are going to be due. I just want to point your attention to this is the way that it does it by date, which is great because it helps you figure it out. But again, what I wanted to kind of get closer to um, was letting you know that the end of the class uh, is right here on the 19th. And so when we look at this, um, look at how many things are due on the 19th. There's quite a bit of things. So this class you know, may start out a little slow, but that's because I'm trying to get everybody onboarded and feeling comfortable and then bam, it ramps up really fast. And so it can get away from you if you're not uh, paying attention to that. So I just want to direct your attention to that. Now, some of you can do fine in an environment like this. Some students are a little bit more visual learners and I try to take into consideration learning styles of students. It's very important to me. So with that being said, that is why um, I did have on the module for week one, I actually had the uh, course description there as well for you to actually see in a visual. So this is page nine of my syllabus. And I really recommend that students print this out because it's so helpful um, for those visual learners and that are looking at this so that they know what's expected. And so right now, what we're doing here is this is the orientation in this onboarding part. Um, the next step is going to be getting your book. Then it's going to be starting to require uh, the reading, which would be chapter one and chapter two. And as you can see that I've set it up out here, this is in week one and all of these things are going to need to occur in week one and those are going to be inside the modules. But what I want to direct your attention to is right here I will be doing a um, live Zoom video conference on the first day of class which is May 26th on Tuesday and then I'll do another one on Wednesday. And these are optional but these are just to help people through this onboarding process. And so if students are starting this process and getting um, stuck and they need help that's that's kind of what i'm going to be there for um, is to do that but i'm also hopeful that not that many people will need help <laughs> um, hopefully they'll be able to do it but you can click on this is my um, room link to my direct meeting and you can join like that i also have it listed over here now what i want to direct your attention to on this is that what i'd mentioned before which is color coding so i have tried to color code all of these things so that you kind of know um, what what things are due at what time. So as you can kind of see here, they're different colors. And then I have the um, key down here that tells you uh, what these things mean. Because uh, sometimes students get 
confused because I'm asking you to perform and complete things that are not always in Canvas. Now, one thing I will tell you about Canvas is that I've tried very hard to make everything what we call a single sign-on. And what I mean by that is that when you log in here, you're going to be able to get to wherever you need to go by clicking on a link to take you somewhere. It's just knowing which link to click on, and that's why some of this color coding can be very helpful um, from that perspective. Okay, and um, so the last thing that I want to do with this is just kind of go over now how do I get the book because that's the hardest part um, that students tend to get more nervous about and, and have a little bit more issues with that. So here I am up in uh, the My Lab and Mastering area. So if you go ahead and you click on your My Lab and Mastering, we've talked about the different ways that you can obtain the book. You can buy it from the bookstore. You can buy it direct from the publisher. Um, I've also may have mentioned that there is a 14 day free trial. Um, so even if you don't have the money to get your book today, I strongly encourage you to log in and use their free trial because you do not want to get behind. This course again is super accelerated and you could end up um, failing the class if you wait to get your paycheck. So, or what your financial aid or whatever it is that you need um, to, to, to get the, the textbook material. So just go ahead and, and take their free um, 14 day trial. Okay, so what's going to happen here is that when you are ready, you figured out which way you want to do it. You either went to the bookstore, you bought it, now you have an access code, or you have your debit card and you're ready to pay today, or you're going to get the free access. The first thing that you have to do is click on the open the My Lab and Mastering. So when you click on the My Lab and Mastering, yours is going to look different than mine. So I want to point this out. Mine is actually already fully onboarded. And so this isn't the process that you're going to get right when you're trying to pay. But I want to let you know that this is how the, um, the course is kind of set up. And so it's got a calendar right here for you to see. If you choose the calendar option, you can also choose the list option if you like lists better. Um, I'm more of a visual calendar kind of person. And so you can see when these things are due, okay, just like that, that are coming up. And they should also transfer to Canvas and let you know that they're due. But again, it is an outside portal. And so sometimes things get missed by computers. And so I just want to, you know, take, take again the time to say that the course, um, outline that I have that that color coded one will tell you when all of these are due and they specifically give you the color code that they're mastering and they're inside of this portal here. Okay, and so again, we go all the way up until the end of class and you can see there's quite a few assignments, but this is also these things here are required um, for part of your grade and this is part of the access that you're getting when you're using the access code or ask or paying for the Pearson portal. The other thing that you're getting is something right here that I want to direct your attention to and that's the my diet analysis. So if you haven't heard in this particular course, you're actually going to be recording three days of food. In fact, you're going to be doing it very soon. It's going to happen the first week. You need to start on um, Thursday. You need to do Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of the first week of this instruction and record anything and everything that you put in your mouth, either food or liquid. And um, then what we're going to do is input it here into the diet analysis software. And then after you do that, then we're going to get some really interesting results about your diet and we're going to interpret those through the entire course so that you have a better snapshot of what your diet is. And so we do need to go into this portal. And so this portal is inside of My Lab and Mastering. Then you need to click on the My Diet Analysis software that will then bring you to this. Now, the first thing that you need to do when you're in here is to actually watch these videos because they're going to give you some very helpful information and you have a diet analysis. Um, homework assignment that, that will pull out information that's from this. But what will happen over time after you've done all of these things is that you're going to be creating a profile. And here I have a profile um, of different people. And then with these people, what they do, and you'll only have one, but you can have multiple ones if you want to input any, any, any of your family members or whoever you'd like. Um, but once you have the profile, then you're going to go in and you're going to track the diet. So you're going to go in and put in everything that you ate um, for three days. And remember, it's going to be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It's going to be right here. So you're going to have three days worth of data that's going to be included here. And um, then what you're going to do is 
is put in any activity that you've done. And after you've done all this, then you're going to get these reports. And these are the reports that are right along here. And these are the things that are going to be very um, interesting for you. Now, again, I have another tutorial on all of how to do this and what I'm looking for in these reports. But this is just an introduction to kind of get you to see and feel um, a little bit more about what's going to be happening here. So um, if you have a hard time getting into the mastering portal, the one thing that I would tell you is that you probably need to allow for pop-ups um, and or clear your cookies. Those are the two number one things that students will have problems with um, is that they haven't allowed this particular website to allow for pop-ups because it's moving from one uh, learning the learning management system to their internal portal system and so that's a pop-up for them and so we need to be able to allow that same thing when you go into my diet analysis okay so um, and if you don't know how to do any of those things um, i would suggest googling how to allow pop-ups for whatever browser you use i use safari because i use a mac but if you're using chrome if you're using mozilla firefox um, internet explorer whatever it is you need to to figure those out and and allow that but the other really interesting and nice thing at least from a technical perspective is that if you are um, buying the book when it's already here embedded uh, that you're paying for technical support so you can actually get live 24 7 support right here so again i was telling you about that single sign on you click here and then it's going to take you to getting support and you are going to get live pearson support um, here so that is the important thing is that we stay with this i feel like students if they can stay within our um confines of this canvas shell that they can maneuver very well, but they need to learn how to do that. So if you're having problems with your canvas and onboarding, one of the best things for you to do is actually contact Pearson support directly. It's usually not something that I can help you with. It's usually something technical with your computer. Again, like I said, with the pop ups or something like that. The other thing that you can do is get diagnostics right here. You can actually have Pearson check your computer to see if you're running what is compatible with what they're running. So for example, I use Safari, but it depends on the actual um, browser version of Safari because the um, some of the versions don't work with um, Canvas and the my lab mastering Pearson portal. And so it's important to they'll tell you which ones that you could use. So for me, if I have problems, sometimes the best practice and what Pearson's preferable um, browser is is actually Google Chrome. So try it in Google Chrome. It might work for you there um, because that is their preferred one. But I can get it to work on mine. So it can work. It just depends on the, um, the version. And that's where Pearson support can really help you with some of those things. Okay, so I believe I have kind of covered everything. The other thing that I want everybody to know is that from an announcement perspective, these announcements have went out or will go out. Um, the first one is to let you know that we ha I have launched the class, so you would have gotten that one hopefully um, today. Um, but the other one that's extremely important is the first day of attendance. And so even though you're getting this right now, it's okay for you to go in and actually, uh, as soon as you get online and, and kind of start looking around to go ahead and record the link for attendance. You don't actually have to do it on the first day, but the legal first day of this course is on Tuesday, the 26th. And so I need to hear from all students by Tuesday, the 26th at 1159. And the way that I hear from them is by clicking this link. And if you don't click this link and go into the attendance poll, I'm going to be dropping you because there are students that do need to add this class and that are on the wait list. And um, so it's, I can't stress enough, but you can do it early. And so that's the point that I want everybody to know is like, if you're watching this now, one of the things that you can do when you're done is do this. And so when you get here, it's going to be, it's going to say FN4, first day of attendance required response and you're just going to go through and answer these questions and you will submit it okay again it's a single sign on that you click on right here now the only other thing that I can see that I want to just introduce to you is that there is going to be some free software that you're going to be using for some of the activities in this course one of them is called Canva and Canva is an infographic site and you can design different things and some of you might be familiar with it especially right now they're doing a whole lot with the zoom backgrounds and and different things but um so it's a really fun uh 
software for you to get to know and you'll be able to use it in your, your college career. If you've never used it before, if you've already used it, welcome back. Um, and it's free. So do not buy anything. Just buy, just get the free ones. Okay, that's one of them. The other one that you're going to want to have um, access to and create if you haven't already is Kahoot. Kahoot's is like a, it's kind of like a quizzing uh, fun little area that teachers can have with students. So make sure you have a Kahoot account. And we also are going to have an account um, in Padlet. Now Padlet's one, it's Padlet's supposed to stand for more or less like a, um, like a pad that you rip off, like a post-it note. Um, and so it's, it's kind of, that's the idea behind it. But they have a free subscription that will allow you to have like three or four of these going at one time. Um, you can upgrade to a paid subscription. Do not do that. Make sure that when you log into Padlet that you're going to get the free subscription. And again, I will have tutorials on every single one of these softwares for you with videos for you to go through and watch before you go in and log in. But I just wanted to introduce you to them. And then the last one that I don't actually have up is called VoiceThread and it's going to be your first one that you're going to use. And so VoiceThread is also free and is not required um, that, you that you pay, uh, but you will have to create an account on VoiceThread. And we're actually going to do a, 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 an assignment where you're going to be meeting some of your peers. You're gonna be meeting me virtually and then you're gonna meet some of your peers virtually. And I think it, it's a way that we can start to get to know each other as a class. And so I encourage you to, to use that. That. But um, how do I know that that's coming up? That goes back to this area right here. If I go to my home page and I go to week one, oops, there we go. Meet your peers activity, May 29th, 10 points to do that activity. If you click on this, because you've already seen the other two, that's perfectly fine. I've got all of the information that you need right here. And again, with a single sign on to click this link to get started. Once you're done with this one, you can come back to this area. And when you're done, you click next and you move to the next assignment. So again, this is kind of how um, the online world in this particular course is set up. Again, if any of you have any questions, I'm going to be holding live Zoom conferencing um, for orientation on Tuesday at 11 and Wednesday at 11. If you're not able to um, come at that time, we can possibly schedule a time that is convenient for you and myself, and we can do an individual Zoom if we need to, or I can record those Zooms and put them up there so that students that had questions, you might have the same question they had. Okay, so this is all for today. Welcome again to the course. I'm very excited to be your instructor. Just to reiterate a few things that um, this class is asynchronistic. You can work at your own pace and I strongly encourage you to get ahead now because if you don't, it gets very intense at the end. And so the more that you can do ahead, the better. I've mentioned it also before in another video that you can expect for this course to be spending anywhere from 15 to 25 hours a week for what's due in this course because it's four uh, chapters on average every week. So, and we're asking you to read the text, we're asking you to do homework, we're asking you to do additional discussions so that we can tell that you're learning what you're seeing from the text, what you're learning from the PowerPoints, what you're learning from the videos. So again, if you don't have 25 to, excuse me, 15 to 25 hours, possibly more, depending on your learning modality, um, to devote to this course, then this might not be a class that you wanna take in the summer because it is very intense in a four week session. It's 18 weeks pulled into four weeks and this transfers to any university. So I have to make sure that we're meeting the standards um, of this course and the learning outcomes that are uh, available that are said for this course. So uh, with that being said, uh, please do note that you will need to have some time to work on this and I will allow you in an asynchronous approach to go ahead and work ahead and get through this. You can submit things way early if you want to because you have more hours. Like let's say in week one you're not working as much as you are. You got your schedule for week two and you know you have a lot of work to do. Like you have to work at your job. Then you need to do more in week one. Do all of week one and all of week two um, and then catch up. So 
that's kind of how it'll work. Again, I'll be available, it's usually on Mondays. I try to keep the same time so that students know what time it is, but I realize, you know, that might be a problem for some that have work at that time. And I'm willing to make some exceptions and see if I can meet you in a Zoom call at a different time. Okay, so, oh my gosh, that was a lot to talk about, but I hope that now you have a little bit better understanding of how the course is laid out, some of the expectations of the course, and how you can get in touch with me if you need me. Oh, the last thing that I didn't actually talk about is if you wanna get in touch with other students, if you don't know already, when you um, go into your inbox, when you're in your inbox and you wanna create, um, you can select the course and then from the course, you can select the student that you want to contact as well. So that's another way that you can contact students. But again, the best way for you to do that is to just post in the question cafe and students will all know to go there and look. So again, I appreciate all of your um, time for listening to this video today and I'm trying to get orientated, spend some time, look around, and I look forward to um, these next few weeks to come. So until we talk again. See you later.